Hello and welcome back. If you've been thinking about building your own fossil preparation box like this one, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you the steps and supplies that you need to, to build one. In my last video, I showed you the considerations for the tabletop, tabletop height uh, for your prep area when you're working with the microscope. And I also made a uh, test box out of cardboard to try and figure out, make sure everything was going to work. Test box was good, height was good for working with the microscope, so now it's time to actually make the box. The first step to creating your own prep box is to decide on the dimensions that you need. For the amount of space that I have available and the requirements while using my microscope, my box dimensions are 24 by 20 by 8 inches. For a box this size, it turns out that a quarter sheet of plywood is almost perfect. It winds up being a fraction of an inch shorter in length, but that was a trade-off I could live with to use a smaller and cheaper piece of lumber. The plywood sheet will form the top and bottom of the box. Measure and mark the cut lines. Remember the old saying, measure twice, cut once. It might save you a return trip to the lumber store. Next, cut out your sidewalls. I started with a 7 by 18 and a half inch pine board. Because of the clamshell design of this box, you need to make sure that your side pieces are identical. If they aren't, you could have trouble with the top not closing completely, or you could have a large gap along one side. In order to make sure that my cuts were the same, I aligned the two sides, then screwed them together. As long as your screws are in the top and bottom half inch, you can use them for running assembly screws later. My cut line marks are 1 inches from what will be the front bottom and 2 inches from the back top. I find it helpful to lay out and pre-drill the assembly screw holes in the top and bottom pieces. I started out with way too many screw holes on this side. You only need to screw about every 3 or 4 inches. I find the easiest way for me to get the holes centered is to mark out the width of the boards these will be mounting to. Fortunately, small mistakes like this can easily be filled with a tiny amount of wood filler putty. I also marked out the cut lines for the viewing window. The easiest way is to lay your glass sheet where you want it, then mark the outside lines. Then measure about a quarter inch inside of those lines. I used a standard sized 11 by 14 picture frame glass for ease of replacement. My window is set 3.5 inches off the left side, and two and a half inches back from the front edge. The front face board is a single 24 by seven and a quarter inch piece. It should be mounted to the underside of the top of the plywood and to the front of the side pieces only. If you screw it to the lower piece of the side panels, it won't be able to open. The back hinged panel is the same dimension as the front but you will cut it lengthwise two inches down from the top edge. This will mirror the back end of the side panel cuts. Assemble the top and bottom of the hinge panel to the top and bottom portions of the box like this. When mounting the piano hinge, be sure to carefully line up the center of the hinge on the cut line of the panel. Start by loosely mounting two or three screws in the top and bottom mount holes and make sure that the box will open and close properly. Tighten the first screws down and again check the operation of the hinge, loosen and adjust if needed. Once the lid opens and closes smoothly, then mount the remaining screws. Don't worry about tightening them down all the way just yet. If you plan on painting the outside, you will want to remove them anyway. Next, plan where you want your armholes to be. Since this is a rather shallow box, there isn't really an up and down decision. You want to make sure that the holes are spaced apart to be comfortable to rest your arms in them. If the holes are too narrow or too wide, it will be very uncomfortable to use the box for long durations. The diameter of the holes depends partly on your needs and partly on what your end design will be. If you are just leaving the holes bare, you can make them whatever size you want, as long as they fit the board. You should leave about an inch on the bottom, since the front panel is also the closing lip of the box. If you are planning on using pre-made 
blast cabinet sleeve mounts, then use those as a template for marking the cutting line. Just make sure they are centered on your armhole dimension measurements. Start by drilling a hole on the inside edge of the cutout. You can use this as a starting place for your saw to cut out the holes. You will need to cut a hole for the vacuum attachment at the rear of the box. Roughly centered in the rear panel, but exact location isn't important. You can put it anywhere along the back or side of the box that works best for you. The shop vac hose mount I used was 2.5 inches outside diameter, but slightly flared near the base, so make sure to take the wider size into consideration, or you can use a round file to widen the hole a little bit more to allow it to fit. My shop vac hose end fits perfectly inside this mount. Lay your glass plate over the cut lines you marked and ensure you have enough of a lip for the glass to sit on. Once you're satisfied with your cut marks, you can use the same starting hole method from the arm mounts to cut the window space. It will be easier to put a starting hole along each side of the viewing window rather than try and turn your saw blade inside the corner while cutting. Once you're happy with the construction, take a flat file and lightly round off all the edges and then sand to prevent splinters. At the very least, you should paint the inside of the box with white paint. I went with a low gloss pure white. This allows the most light reflection inside the box, but it won't have a glare or a shine. I chose to paint the whole box. The paint also seals the wood to prevent swelling or shrinking from moisture changes. Now that we have the box build complete, it's time to start putting all the components into it to uh, actually make it a functioning prep box. I'm going to show you some of the parts that I'm using. I have three of these uh, LED strips that are going to go inside and power and this is a power converter for the LEDs and I will show you how all this goes together. Start by stripping the ends of the wires. You can make these direct connections if you wish I used bullet connectors to allow simple removal and replacement if needed. The connectors simply crimp onto the stripped wire ends. Lay out the light strips where you want them mounted inside the top lid. Mark the edges, then use those lines for the light mount placement. I place my lights at the front and sides of the viewing window. Excess wire links can be bundled and zip tied out of the way rather than worrying about making the wire links perfect. One thing I'm doing with this box, which is the same that I did with my uh, Harbor Freight Blast box, is I want a I want a switch on the side so that when I flip it, I have internal lights and vacuum power at the same time. And I'll show you how to do that because this is probably one area that probably would freak most people out. This is a uh, extension cord. This is probably way longer than I need since my plug-in for right now is probably, you know, 12 inches away from the box. But if I ever need to move the box anywhere, I've, I've got a 15-foot extension cord. i got plenty of room. But this is a 14-gauge extension plug-in. It's made for shops, so it's made to power a little bit more than just a than just a standard desk lamp you don't want to use those cheap Walmart brown flat extension cords uh, that's not gonna work for you so working backwards from here the lights they've got the red and the black wire this is your power supply that converts your AC current down to your 12 volt volt currents for your light and it has a red and black wire too so just like hooking the lights up red to red black to black these go out to your power supply to your AC and I'm not sure if that how well that's showing up on camera it's labeled here on the box uh, blue is your alternating current neutral and brown is your alternating current with the load. So this is your, brown is your hot wire, blue is your neutral wire. 
So this will be mounted inside the box here. Oh, so I like that. And run the wires. I've got a hole drilled here. The box, the power box is going to be mounted here like this. All right, so you're in the wires out through the box. And those are going to go into, for me, it's going to go into one of these uh, holes on the back side. And my wires are small enough, I didn't have to knock out the plug out on there. Okay, so my wires are going to go in through this handy access hole. Okay, now since I want to be able to plug my shop vac in, I don't want to hardwire my shop vac into here, I want to want to be able to plug it in. So I'm giving it a little pigtail plug and all I did was I took this extension cord and I cut the end off of it here and I've run it in. So you want, you're going to have three wires in here. Your green, that's your ground wires. Your black, those are your hot wires. And your whites are your neutral. And all you are doing with your switch is you're connecting this is a single pole, single throw switch. It just has two positions, on or off. So, all you're doing is you're going to connect a hot to this side and a hot to that side. And then wire your neutrals together. And then your grounds, they'll go together here under the, they're held down with this screw. And then your neutral, your neutral goes in here with these. I have this taped up because I was playing with this earlier, just making sure everything was working. So this goes into your hot. Put that up in there behind that little plate. Sorry, I know you can't see that. I had to get that little plate to fall away so that I could put a wire under it. Okay, and now we just need to strip this out. Now we just need to strip this out a little bit further, and we'll put that in there with those. And so that's your wiring. So you've got your you've got your neutrals together. You got your hots on the switch and you got your ground together on the switch frame. Then that is going to go down inside the box. It'll be screwed down. And then the plate goes over the top like that.
Okay, so now the moment of truth. I'll plug it in and see if it works when I turn the switch on. All right, let's see if it works. <laughs> Yay! Great success. All right, uh, so now just have to uh, clean up a little bit of wiring and get it tacked down in place so that it's not in the way while we're working. Sweet! And since you're going to need a way to handle dust, we've got our dust porthole cut in the back. And this is what I'm using here. Uh, PowerTech brand inlet flange, two and a half inch outside opening and I had to you can see it's got a little bit of a taper on there so I had to taper the edge of my hole a little bit but she's a nice snug there you go nice snug perfect fit now I don't have a whole lot of room off of the back end so, I also have an elbow, and it slips beautifully right in there like that to give me a nice tight 90, because putting the hose in here, that hose doesn't want to make a tight turn, and it was getting pretty cramped back there in the back. So that way I'm, I can take this all the way out to the edge or even a little further back and I've got plenty of room back here on the back. One of the last things I'll have to do is to drill a hole somewhere in here. I may even do it directly below this and that way I can just run my vacuum hose straight down through there. Okay, and now to start reassembling. There's my screwdriver and my bag of screws. Alright, so the glass, pl the glass plate that I chose is an 11 by 14. It's a standard size that you can pick up uh, almost anywhere in uh, picture frames, document frames. It's a, 11 by 14 is really easy to find along with other sizes. 11 by 14 is the one that I, I chose. And you need to make sure that your, your hole is just a little bit smaller. So the actual opening should be about 10 and a, if you're using this glass it should be about 10 and a half by 13 and a half and then we're just going to use these little mirror mounts they'll just sit on there right like that and hold that in place we'll get those screwed down and then this part of the rebuild will be done that box will be ready to go Hopefully you got some good ideas on how to make your own box from this video. And if you enjoyed it, then stick around for the next episode where I am going to upgrade my air system. I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to supercharge it with this. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed my video, please go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you want to stay up to date on all my latest videos, be sure and subscribe so that you don't miss the next one.